Hello, my name's Dr. Simon Freilich, back with the Clinical Neurophysiology channel, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about basic healthy EEG patterns during wakefulness, specifically the alpha rhythm. EEG is recorded using wires placed in certain points over people's heads, and those wires then get plugged into a machine. And this is an EEG machine, and you can see here this is the amplifier, which takes those signals from the wires, amplifies them, and then feeds them into the computer where they can be analysed. You'll see on top, this is a photic stimulator, a LED light which can flash, and that can stimulate photic sensitivity, which we can assess, and I've talked about previously in other videos. So where we put the leads is actually quite specific. We use something called the 1020 system, so-called because it uses measurements and uh, percentages to make our different points of 10 and 20 percent. And so we go longitudinally and horizontally, and we can put our leads in very specific places which correlate to known areas of particular parts of the brain. And this is what we get. We get a head map. This is a a two-dimensional head map and you can see over here all these different leads from the 1020 system now there's more that can be recorded than just the 1020 system but this is the standard way of recording your standard EEG on the right side you'll notice that all the numbers are even and on the left side they are odd and the different regions and different leads have corresponding uh, letters so the frontal regions have the F uh, letter next to them. Um, so FP is frontal pole, which actually is over here on the forehead, really. Um, and then this is the frontal midline, and then these are to the side of that. The central regions, CZ, which is actually marking the vertex, the paracentral regions there. We have the temporal regions marked with the letter T. And then we have the parietal with the letter P, occipital with the O, and the mastoids, which go behind the ears, with the letter A. Now, when we're trying to record electrical activity, um, what we are always doing is instead of knowing exactly what's going on just underneath a particular point, it's always in reference to something else, which is why we me always measure a potential difference. And in the world of EEG, the most simplest way of doing that is by recording in comparison to an adjacent lead. What we would do is we would daisy chain up a whole variety of different leads and therefore we can make a recording. So this is known as the bipolar longitudinal or double banana montage. So you can see the two bananas, which is why it's called that, but it's called bipolar because it's going from, from pole to pole, from nose to the back of the head, twice over. And it's longitudinal because it's going in this particular direction. You can do this in the transverse direction, in which case you're switching from uh, from side to side instead. But this is the most common way. And just for ease throughout all the other uh, rest of my videos, if you see EG, usually um, you will see this in colour. And uh, I use a red for the right side and blue for the left side. And usually I use uh, either black or orange uh, for going straight down the middle. So that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is against a common average. So if you want to know what's going on under F4, we can reference the electrical activity picking up from there um, across all these other different electrodes. And the reason that we don't include the frontal pole ones with these ones usually is because of the potential to having muscle activity contaminating that average. And so this is how we tend to do that. Now you can do that not against all of them, uh, or a lot of them, you can do that in a more limited and selected way using a Laplacian montage, for example, where you use just the surrounding electrodes to generate that average. So the alpha rhythm was first published in 1929 by Hans Berger. Obviously, it was worked on for several years before that. And so really, we're coming up towards a centenary uh, nearly of this. And he described it uh, as, as the first rhythm that he, he could pick up, which is why it's known as the alpha rhythm. And that's why it has that name. And that's a picture of his laboratory. So the alpha rhythm is present in about 95% of the population. Um, and so not having an alpha rhythm isn't necessarily a problem, but it is a positive sign of um, circuit integrity. And it has very specific characteristics. We see it when the eyes are closed during relaxed wakefulness. It occurs at a particular frequency band of 8 to 13 times per second, 8 to 13 hertz, and it has a particular type of 
shape to it, a spindle shape where it waxes and wanes, and it tends to be of largest amplitude towards the back end of the brain. And as I said, it's there when the eyes are closed, and so it will reduce down when the eyes are open. And um, when we are relaxed, it's there, but when we're more active, and so we can ask people to do some calculations, it will attenuate as well. This is an alpha rhythm. So um, right is um, in red, blue is on the left, and so we've got the frontotemporal chains for right, left, and centroparietal chains over here, right and left. Each one of these uh, boxes is one second, and if we start counting the number of cycles per second that we see in each box, so it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a bit. So it's about nine hertz, nine cycles per second, which are occurring in each of these boxes. So that's a nine hertz alpha rhythm. You can see that as we go from the frontal regions towards the back of the head, um, it increases in amplitude, so it's posterior dominant. And you can also see its spindly type shape here over here. It waxes and then it wanes, waxes, wanes, waxes, wanes, waxes, wanes. So that's exactly what an alpha rhythm behaves like in health. Over here, I've asked the uh, person to open their eyes, and you can see that this alpha activity over here, once they've opened their eyes, has now attenuated down. You can almost not see it. And if we go to the next page over here, when they've actually now closed their eyes over here, it reappears and it's got its nice spindly formation once again. So that's alpha rhythm. Now, the alpha rhythm has been uh, well described now, for, as I've said, for nearly a century, but the generators and the circuits involved are incredibly complex, and we'll leave that for another time. This is mainly descriptive. The significance of having a good alpha rhythm is it's a very useful biomarker of general brain health and circuit integrity, and we'll talk about aberrations and implications of that at future points. And in the next video, I'm going to discuss what happens to brain rhythms during sleep. So looking forward to seeing you then and uh, catch you then.